Hey, what's up, dear Glitch Aficionados? Welcome back to this second devlog of Bug Hunter. It's been a while since I've posted something about the project, and yeah, recently I've made some kind of cool progress, especially on the mechanical level. So uh, I'm really hyped to show you what I've done recently. And um, so, as you can see, <coughs> the world hasn't really changed. Uh, in fact, it it hasn't changed. Uh, on any level. I just add a couple of platform here and there to test some functionality, but uh, mainly the, um, okay, so yeah, there's a there, there's a couple of changes. Uh, let's first uh, start with some aesthetic element. And so as you can remember, you uh, have an infinite amount of rocks in your uh, inventory. And when you shoot rocks now, it applies this, uh, this decal. And so there's a set of 10 decals that I've made the, in Photoshop. And I think the what is cool about them, as you can notice, there are some faces hidden behind the, uh, the decal. And so I've, I've uh, worked work with uh, glitch images that I really like online and I photo bash them uh, in Photoshop just to create this uh, crack effect and so and there's the, in, in the code there's a, a randomized uh, selection of a decal each time uh, the player shots a rocks a rock and so yeah uh, um, this leads me to talk about the let mot let motive of the crack or the fissure or the uh, the broken glass <laughs> aesthetic figure. Um, the main point here is um, I, I want to give the feeling to the player that when he's glitching, he's really uh, like kind of uh, smashing the representation. Uh, and, and as you can imagine in the um, uh, final uh, level when there will be photorealistic element here and there, um, the player will use rocks to realize objective and uh, especially to kill some bugs so as you can see there's some small bugs here we'll, we'll talk about this later and so after his endeavor he will have shot a huge amount of rocks in fact and and i want to get the feeling that when he when player uh, looks back at his trajectory in the game space in the game world he can just Kind of look back and say oh geez i've done all of this and by doing so having the feeling of being the creator of his own experience his own gameplay and uh, this is my way of kind of saying or reflecting the glitch experience in general which is about um, taking control of the means of production or taking uh, pre-existing cultural material and just trying to glitch them with different technologies, especially computer. Um, and uh, by doing so, you you become kind of a creator of your own experience, of, of your own media experience. And I want to transpose this logic inside Bug Hunter. And so by using this uh, kind of decal, aesthetic decal, um, yeah, the player can kind of feel that he is painting the environment by being transgressive in it and by subverting the, uh, the design structure. Uh, yeah, so there's the design idea behind uh, the, uh, this, uh, this aesthetic choice. And there's also uh, another cool point, I think, is that by being transgressive and by shooting some rocks at the environment to break it, to break the representation, um, you kind of get a glimpse of what happens behind the representation, above the representation, where the system doesn't have any control, uh, let's say. And, and in this above the representation, I want to give the feeling that there is presence. Uh, so as you can see, the figure of the eye here give a sense that the player is being observed from an abstract uh, non-mimetical space um, that is in the margin of the system. And so uh, this has uh, a gameplay pur purpose, <coughs> I'm sorry, 
the purpose of kind of poking at the curiosity of the player. So when he sees that there's something above the representation, eventually he may have, uh, he may be tempted to try to push the boundary of the system of the system to go beyond that representation. And of course, as you will see, there is game mechanics that allows this to happen. And so, yeah, so this is a kind of a trigger to be transgressive. So this, there is a gameplay function here also. Cool. OK, so another thing is those fellas right here, those little fellas flying around, messing around with the simulation physics. So this is the uh, metaphor of bugs. And so, as you may remember from the first devlog, the player uh, is embodied in this unfinished game where the production really fall into chaos and you are in, a, in an ambiguous position. Are you a hacker? Are you a glitcher? Are you a cheater? Are you a playtester uh, that uh, whose role is to get rid of bugs as uh, efficiently as possible? So there's an ambigui ambiguity of position here. And those are the famous bugs. So at first, you may remember, but it was uh, just red, cu red cube uh, flying around. I've also tried to replace those cube by bees because at some point I want to um, I want to create a, a, a representation of a bug that that is not dangerous that doesn't seem dangerous that even that can even be interpreted as uh, nice and uh, beautiful and um, inviting so something that you want to interact with not necessarily something that you want to destroy, that you want to control, that you want to manipulate to your own ends. Quite the contrary, I want to create this feeling of, yeah, beautiful creature flying around doing their own things. Um, and so, yeah, so you don't have uh, your, your, the, I want the player to have uh, a first reflex of uh, trying to protect or not to, not to bother those bugs. But of course, the conformist design asks you to kill those bugs. So by shooting rocks at them, you can, as you may remember from the first devlog, you can collect the currency of the game, which are dead pixel, that small cube right here. So when you collect it, it goes up in your head up display up there on the left. So you can see now I, I have four uh, currency. So let me kill a couple more because I want to show you something related to the game, the game sorry, the game economy. Um, okay, let's do this. Kills a couple. Okay, so let me grab, let me grab my money. I want to be rich. I want a glitch to be famous. Okay, so now I have 12. That pretty much it. I need 20 for the demonstration. wait a bit but uh, let me grab all those so you get the logic and uh, yeah so I was I was talking about the bees but um, yeah so at some point I use bees because I want glitch uh, bugs to be really adorable and uh, it doesn't fit really well with the uh, game discourse uh, I thought that I missed a chance to use aesthetic to represent something really closer to the discourse of the game and so I decided to, to go with this spherical, asymmetrical bubble like this. This is a, uh, um, let's say, uh, over dimension bug. <laughs> Sorry for my bad English. It, it comes, it's, it's part of the deal. Okay, and so this is the uh, enlarged version of the bug. And basically I've just bring a sphere inside the uh, blender and just uh, pull the, uh, the vectrices on various direction, kind of folding the 3D object on itself and trying to create that, uh, those, those spikes around the bugs. And, um, I, and the, uh, the idea was to mimic this figure of a virus. And so I think it's the perfect mix of, of hey, look at this, unidentifiable creature that is beautiful aesthetically 
and at the same time it seems dangerous because I don't want to be poked by it and um, and so I'm not sure how to behave in front of those bugs and so this is the right sweet spot I want to uh, to create in the game because at some point if the player takes the transgressive route and instead of the conformist route uh, you will be able to open up glitch crack and spawn more bugs in the game environment because glitch is nice and glitch all you to be creative and glitches uh, kind of uh, let uh, new forms of gameplay emerges and so i want to uh, yes i want to to uh, encourage let's say the uh, creation of bugs not the elimination of bugs and so okay that's uh, another aesthetic element and so let's now jump right into the gameplay element i have coded recently um, so as you can remember again you have your inventory wheel and uh, various glitches artifact uh, for now it's just sphere because i'm still uh, working more on the on the code i need to determine an aesthetic object that will fit the uh, spirit of the of the glitch mechanics I don't want to show you right now. I say, okay, so let's grab them. So as you can see, now they are in my inventory. Just a quick re reminder and uh, something I want to show you also. The famous debugger is where uh, you can buy some glitches instances. So if you go here near the debugger, again, this is not the final aesthetic result of this machine, it's just a dummy. To, <clears throat> to explain you what I want to do. And so as you can see, I have added uh, a comment prompt section on the left of the screen in the middle. And so if I enter the trigger box of the famous debugger, you can see I can press E to open. So let's open this. And yeah, this is a new addition in the design. At first, uh, when you open the debugger interface, you only add um, you only uh, had the, uh, the button in the middle of the screen. So what I've done is just to um, displace the button, decenter the button a bit and spawn, uh, spawn the inventory right beside the, uh, the button. And so now what is, I think it's pretty cool is that when I hover my mouse over each button, it highlights the right uh, item in my inventory. So let's say I have now I have 22 dead pixel in my uh, in my inventory in my adobe display so if i have a specific puzzle to resolve and i'm stuck uh, a player will have to plan ahead uh, uh, which kind of glitch uh, which kind of glitch or glitches you want to use or combine how many of them he thinks he will need and so I'm th i think it's pretty cool to have this to put the player in this strategic position where he has to question his own gameplay, how he want to plan his strategy and everything. And this is uh, paramount in creating the effect of, um, not the effect, but creating the idea that glitches are embedded in a, a polit ludopolitical economy, which is the main argument of Bug Hunter. And so, yeah, so by just by thinking about this, planning ahead, how much it costs, how many I need uh, to be transgressive or to respond to the, uh, the game rule, the game objectives, uh, just to be in that state of mind from the, st the player's standpoint. Uh, it's my way to put, it, put, put player in contact with the glitch uh, ludopolitical economy, which is the main purpose of Bug Hunter. So let's say, okay, I want to buy a couple more demassifier, uh, okay, I have a bit of money for uh, maybe a switcher and I'll keep 20 dead pixel for now because I want to show you how patches can be used also. Okay, so I'm good. So let's now experiment and kind of show you what can be done with those mechanics. Uh, I have coded a really simple script that allow me to pick up object by pressing E. So as you can see now, there's a problem. <laughs> in the comment prompt section but yeah when i'm uh, near an object i can as you can see press e and then uh, grab that object and when the object is held you have uh, three more interactions that you uh, that you can do uh, as you can see there pressing the first mouse button to throw 
the uh, mouse wheel to translate the object on the z-axis and holding the second mouse button to rotate the object to rotate the object according to the position you want and you'll see why it becomes really important uh, for my glitch mechanic and when you rotate rotate the object too far it falls so you have to gauge the distance at which you want to translate the object uh, because if you go too far you will uh, drop okay so now let's let me show you in action our first mechanic the demassifier so when you shot a demassifier at uh, an object of the let's say the ground environment or that uh, meaning the ceiling the, the the floor some walls uh, as you can see up there on the right you you don't lose your uh, your glitch you will still have seven even if you shoot at object that cannot be demassified but there will be a, a set of objects that will be glitchable or demassifiable and those objects will be mainly boxes, crates, uh, table, chairs, uh, that kind of object. Object that can be in a way grabbed photorealistically, let's say. And so when you shoot, so let's say this is a table or a crate or something like this. And when you shoot a demassifier on it, boom, the textures change, the material changes. And uh, I have also add this really cheap particle system uh, just to just to give the, the just for the player to understand that the object uh, is now uh, has no more gravity uh, anymore so this this kind of uh, floating effect I think the uh, I think the particle system helps creating that floating effect and also you have seen the object is has elevated a bit so this also indicates the player that the object is now demassified and as you can see also up there on the uh, on the right the number of demassifier has uh, go down has been de decremented by two because i have two demassified object okay so if i go here i can grab the object and when i throw it it just stays right in place so it, and uh, as you can imagine, the whole gameplay logic behind this is to give the glitcher again a kind of a radical control over the physics of the simulation, and of course the physics that is uh, diegetically messed up by the presence of the bugs up there that comes from the from the crack that you see there that is open, and that you that the player has to repair. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, so this is this is why the uh, the platform can be demassified, and the whole point of this is to allow the player to be the creator of his own platforms, his own ladder, his own bridge, everything like that. So let's say I want to reach that area right there, just to 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 go up. Okay, so let me grab my uh, my platform maybe uh, translate it a bit to have some space to work and place it according to the angle that I think will be uh, best uh, and easiest way to, to navigate. So let me put this right there approximately. I can also use the second one because why not? Let's make our life easier. Let me put this in a nice angle. I can manage easily and I'm approximately there so I have created my uh, my kind of stairs improvised stairs so if I let me jump right here and Jesus I missed and as you can see maybe it, it is a good idea to maybe remove it more bringing bring it a bit uh, in the front but let's try again just to be sure Rem remember that the player has a double jump function so if i manage to go there okay let's that's it okay cool so let me pick my money because i'm a, an exploiter and i want to be rich okay i have my money right now so okay it, it all goes really fast but i have uh, i had uh, hidden here 
I have hide here uh, an enforcer. So as you can see, I have a new glitch in my inventory. It's just that when I jumped on the platform, uh, I jumped right on the enforcer that was positioned right here. And so, okay, so now it's, it's in my inventory. I have five enforcer. And now it's time to show you what uh, another the other mechanics do. And the next one I want to show you is the switcher, the famous switcher, one of my favorite person personally. Uh, I think it's pretty cool because it gives a really um, radical control about uh, on the configuration of the level design. Uh, at some point, <laughs> by using the, the the switcher, players can uh, can kind of take on the role of a level designer in some in some instance. Uh, okay, and so let me show you how it works. Just a quick parenthesis uh, to show you one new feature. Oh, uh, yeah. So this is uh, by pressing R, you can spawn. Uh, I don't, I'm not really not sure that I will uh, keep this functionality uh, as is, but um, for now, uh, I, I have just coded this kind of really quick script to create and remove oh, uh, remove this. So uh, this is the respawner gaming mechanic I have, I have uh, created. So by pressing R, you can create uh, spawn a platform underneath the player everywhere you want, and it becomes a, a, a teleporter basically. So if I'm here, I can just press R again, and I'm back on my platform. I'm not sure I will keep it for the sole reason that let's just remove that platform for fun. Let's just say that I have uh, in my position, at my disposition, I have this uh, respawner. Let's just say I'm jumping here, respawn here, and it becomes too easy. So the alternative I have in vision, I, have, I haven't tested already, but what I have in, I have in mind is just maybe keep the uh, the respawner at a strategy like using it as a as a, uh, as a safe point basically so player can go near the the uh, the respawner just press a key to activate activate it and now every time they die uh, every time they, they fall into the the abyss of the, of the level design by going under the floor or anything like this he will respawn at this uh, place here so basically it's just a spawn point um, yeah so I think it may be a better balance in terms of game design to have the respawner set up at one place and cannot be moved but uh, but I'm not sure maybe there's some emergent gameplay that can revolve around being able to place it uh, manually but uh, I'll have to, to tinker with it before uh, before deciding again. Okay, so the other thing I want to show you is the unglitching mechanics. So every every uh, ammunition in the weapon wheel has a secondary fire. Um, the secondary fire of the rock is the famous unglitching game mechanic. So I have designed this uh, really simple animation where the, the, the robot, the player, just pull his hand in front of him and shoot a laser. The laser is red because red is a, the, the color of stop and you can just unglitch elements of the uh, environment. So now, as you can see, I, if you remember, I had five demycifier when I unglitch uh, the object the demassifier uh, came back in my inventory. So this is, uh, this is a mechanical way of kind of giving a, some breathing room for the player. Uh, let's say you have a really small amount of, this, of demassifier and by error you shoot one of them on an object that you didn't plan to demassify. Now you have a mechanic to take back your glitch and uh, yeah, plan plan your your uh, your trajectory the way you want. So it gives a, a margin of error that I think it's really important uh, not to yeah not to uh, not for the player to be just pissed off at the system and 
thinking that he is being cheated. Okay, so uh, let me exemplify the switcher. So let's say I, I have only one demasifier and only one platform. Oh, pretty cool here. I don't know why, but the decals kind of overimpose uh, depending on the position of the camera. I think it, it is based on the, uh, the camera. It goes over the character like this. And I decided to not to investigate more because I think it's aesthetically cool just to have this kind of uh, uh, over imposing glitching texture over everything. <laughs> I swear to God, it will be a, a, an, a, an, an aesthetical mess uh, <laughs> upon several uh, minutes or even uh, hour of gameplay. It will be aesthetically messy and uh, this is really designed on purpose. Okay, so let, let's now speak about the switcher. So let's say I equip the switcher and what is fantastic with the switcher is that you can apply it on any surface, whether it is wall, ceiling, floors, grabbable object, anything can be switched. And how does it work? So you apply the switcher on an object and as you can see again, the that motive of the fissure or the crack or the broken glass but this time uh, you can see a mirroring effect a messy rotated uh, mirror effect and the idea behind this aesthetic choice it's to int give a hint to the player that uh, that there's a switching possibility with the uh, the switcher and so the, the the basic idea is that by creating a mirror player can see his own reflection approximately of course and switch place with uh, his reflection basically and so this is how it works and uh, let's say uh, i use now secondary fire as i mentioned every ammo has a secondary fire and here you uh, cast a, lay, uh, a line renderer that mimics the color of the uh, of the switcher and when you hover over a switched object uh, you can see the uh, comment prompt on the left that pops up saying uh, that you can glitch by releasing in this case because here too uh, you have to hold the secondary fire to to use the, the raycast and then when you cross over a switch switchable object you can just uh, remove the secondary mouse button and you will switch place with the object let me show you right there and as you notice you may have noticed there is a lagging effect that is added to the uh, the switching and so oh this is a bit too hard it's, uh, remove my glitch here. Oh, a little bug. Hmm, strange. Uh, so yeah, okay, let me uh, go back to this uh, switcher thing. And so yeah, there's a, a lagging effect. So this is a this is just a co-routing co in my code that I, that, I have, that I have programmed that allows me to uh, give the control back to Unity uh, in, in, inside uh, inside the same function i can put some uh, some delay that gives the the control back to unity and this means that my method my function can be spread over multiple frame uh, across time because a simple method a simple function uh, all the code block has to be uh, executed in one frame but the coroutine allow me to to spread my function across multiple frames and then I just created various intermediary position between the switched object and the player and just randomize some point uh, it, it's an amount of eight point that are randomized during the switching process and this is uh, what creates the kind of bizarre lagging effect and so as you uh, you have noticed the uh, the wall here the switch wall has has moved and now what you can do is just go at the right place where you want to uh, the object to uh, travel and fire the glitch 
So let's say I have done this and mm, it seems a bit high, but uh, I can try still. Uh, so do this. Oh, it's really high. So because it's too high, let's put another one and put it down a bit. So it's easier to, to jump on the platform. It's not perfect. It's still high, but I'll, I'll try anyway to do it. Here we go. Here, I'm not proud of myself <laughs> because I have cheated in my way, in my own understanding of it. You've, you've seen me uh, multi double jump on the wall. So for now, because I have encoded this double jump mechanic correctly, the player can climb over wall by just more, uh, constantly uh, jumping, uh, double jumping on the wall. So this is not correct. I will block this with a boolean value, something like this, and just imagine that this sequence here will uh, has to be done in uh, one one wall jump maximum. But you get the you get the idea. Okay. Now the next the next 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 mechanic. I want to show you the, uh, let's say, the uh, Uncollider. So the Uncollider is a, it's a really cool mechanics that you, uh, when you shoot it on any surface, again, any surface, you just remove the collider of the, of the, of the, of the touched, the touch surface. And when you go through the object, the uh, colliders come back and the original material is put back on the object. And so I think it's a pretty cool mechanic. And as you can see, I have chosen an aesthetic, uh, a glitch aesthetic by uh, always doing the same, the same uh, manipulation basically. So I have taken a glitch, beautiful, beautiful glitch image on the, on the, on the internet. And um, I have just re reworked them in Photoshop. And I have removed the the black. Let me put another uh, on collider here, so it removes the black and only keeps the color and the shapes. Uh, and there's a total of uh, eight texture there that are playing in the loop according to a certain frame rate that I have determined in my code. And uh, one thing that I want to emphasize here it's because because I have removed the black you can see through walls and this is really important gameplay wise so it's an aesthetic choice that has really deep impact on the gameplay because i want the player to use the um on collider as a, a vis visualization visualization device so basically a tool to see through walls and determine which way to go basically so you can see oh there's nothing there so i can grab my glitch back and put it right there kind of make some test let's let's say i want to check through the floor okay there's nothing there i uh, i don't want to jump there because i will i will fall through the floor so let me grab back my glitch and uh, okay but when i shoot here ah let's see there's something hidden there wait a minute would say peter griffin uh okay let's go there oh the, the, the wall is back so everything is working perfectly and look at this little fella right here a hidden thing that's awesome okay what is this so in my inventory i have uh, an empty slot what is this when i take this let me look at it oh i have now a patch and this is the most important no, not the most important, but this is the uh, the crucial object, game object that the player has to use to close the glitch fissure as uh, prescribed by the uh, game design the com and, and especially the conformist route of the, of the game design. So now I have one patch and if you remember, uh, I can buy more in the debugger. And so uh, this is uh, one use of the uh, on collider so as a visualization visualization device i'm sorry and uh, of course as a navigational device to open some doors where there's no doors <laughs> and okay let's come here 
and open the interface, the debugger interface. Now the patch is there and it costs 10. I have one, so let's buy two. So now I have three patch and I cannot buy more because I don't have enough currency, enough dead pixel. And so now I have three patch. Okay, so this is, um, this is perfect. I can show you, uh, I can show you the, how you, how the, how a level will be over. One of the way a level can be finished. So let's me, uh, let me just reach again this platform up there because I need to reach the, uh, the, uh, by the, the glitch crack here. Jesus Christ, it's so hard. Okay, cool. And uh, I, I just move a bit on the left because I want the the wall to uh, to be placed on the left. Let me do this right here. Maybe I don't have to jump that much. And now I can do this. And we, yeah, voila. Okay, so when you're on the platform and you have enough patches or you think you have enough patches to finally do your job and repair the broken level you can come around the glitch fisher and equip the patch and if the patch is equipped and you aim at the uh, at the glitch crack as you can see there is a there are a plank wooded plank that appears but they are transparent and what does this mean is that if you shoot a patch at the uh, at the plank, you can see it becomes opaque. And by doing so, if you uh, do the oh, the whole three, you can see an animation here that is triggered, showing the glitch crack being closed. And so this is how you finish a level. And of course, as you can imagine. The, uh, the glitch crack in itself will, will not be uh, easily accessible and easily visible. You will have to to explore the environment, to use many glitches in your uh, at, uh, turn many glitches in your advantage to find that damn crack to be patched, and so it will be uh, a, a, ch uh, a kind of a hunting challenge in a way, seeking and destroying challenge. And so let, let's say now it's over and we can go to the next level. Okay, and um, so now let's pretend that this is the conformist route. So if the player just decided to be as performant as possible, be quick as possible to kill the, the more, kill all the bugs, get the money and get things done, uh, you will finish the level. And up there, you see there's a Taylor timer. I'll let you figure out why I use the word Taylor here. But uh, according to the time you will um, you will have used, uh, if you have some time left, you will be uh, you will be compensated with uh, more glitch pixel. But as you can see, it's all tricks. It's all a gimmick to push the player to go in a competitive and fast-paced mindset. But as you can see here, we are minus uh, 11 minutes, so the the timer doesn't doesn't have any power over the experience. Instead, other than uh, press putting some pressure, time pressure on the player for for nothing, uh, because I want to uh, I want the player to just just assume and just assume that this goddamn timer is um, oppressive in a way, and that just ignoring it it's way cooler it's way fun and there's way more fun in being transgressive in exploring and testing the limit uh, and just just damn that 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 timer basically and if he does so uh, the experience will uh, will award will grant way more glitches way more interesting uh, feature an interesting aesthetic because okay let's say we are in a official level and i have decided to ignore this uh, objective prescribed by the design and i've chosen to be transgressive and i don't care about the tailor timer okay let's say i'm transgress on the transgressive route right now on the transgressive attitude right now and so what can be uh, done 
using the last glitches mechanic the last glitch mechanic that i want to show you is the enforcer so let me grab uh, back an object here and i'll just bring it in the middle so I, the demonstration will be easier perfect okay so let's apply an enforcer to it and again, Enforcer, like the Demassifier, can only be applied on glitchable object, uh, on a heldable object. And so again, boxes, crate, table, chairs, everything like that. So let's apply a glitch on it. So now the object has an Enforcer on it. And as you can see on the common prompt, prompt on the left, you can click the first mouse button to access, to glitch the object. But first, let me just uh, present what I've aesthetically chosen to do with that glitch. As you can see here, there's some line of code on the texture. And, and this is the actual code that is used to enforce an object. And so I think this is a pretty cool uh, materiality marker or self-reflexive marker or break the fourth wall markers. Uh, that directly expose the code inside the experience. And this is not a false code. Uh, it is the real code that I have copy paste on, uh, that, I, that I have screenshot and tweak a bit so it's more uh, easily uh, readable, but it's the actual code. And uh, so I have done uh, a texture with that code and the texture in itself, no, it's not a texture, it's an array of texture because you have the official texture, so the not glitch, not glitch texture, and I have created uh, 10 instances of the same texture, but with various glitch um, applied to each, uh, to each image. So this is why you have this uh, flickering effect, as you can see here. Uh, some lines, some word moving around. It's just because it's the same image, but with uh, various glitch I have created on it. I have used a, a next editor to do that, to do that kind of glitch, and um, I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty excited to tell you that this texture, uh, this flickering effect, is created by adding marks, Karl Marx quotes inside the data structure of the uh, the image of the of the code image so i have just um, used the x editor and just copy paste some quotation of marks that i think are politically correct and politically revolutionary and and so what you see there is marks in action in the game in virtual action let's say not a uh, not a, uh, not a kind of a revolutionary action it's still hard in uh, no, let's let's assume it's 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 a, it's a, it has a aesthetically uh, radical potential, let's say. And so what you see here is marks in action in the game. Cool. And well, so now let's uh, jump in the uh, glitch effect itself. So when you click on the uh, glitch uh, on the enforced object, you have this. Uh, maybe too complex interface, too much information, maybe, I'm not sure. It's just a first draft, let's say. Let's say. Um, I plan to change this a bit, but the idea is just to put the, uh, to give a visual a code representation of the variable that you can mess with using the enforcer. And so let me walk you through all those var variables. First, you can decide to activate the player rigid body. So by clicking on this toggle button here, you can see there's some var variable that are changed. And so if you want to enforce the object, meaning shooting the object, you uncheck that box. But if you want, con uh, on the contrary, to affect the player's rigid body, you just toggle that uh, checkbox here. So let's say for now, I will just work on the object to show you some cool effect. And um, you have the glitch force here. So it's a force multiplier that you add to the, uh, the velocity of the rigid body. So uh, if I put it like in the top 50, uh, float of 50, uh, of course, you can imagine the object will be catapulted really violent, violently in the, <laughs> in the atmosphere. 
and so let's be more moderate for now because the level is uh, quite condensed on itself and you have the airflow so the airflow it's another flow that allow you to, to uh, control the air drag of your of, of the character not the object because obviously the object doesn't have agency to move uh, by itself but for the when you activate the player's rigid body you can uh, adjust the, the airflow that you want to uh, to have so you can just pull yourself up and with a really high airflow you can radically move from left to right i'll show you an example of this and you also have the angle so you can use the mouse wheel button to determine the angle so at first of course player will may um, might not be familiar with unity uh, orient axis orientation so in unity the z axis is in front the y axis is up and the, um, the x axis is on lateral let's say and um, so by experimenting with this player will discover what, uh, which is the Z, which is the Y, which is the, the X. And so I think this is another uh, important mission of Buck Hunter, just trying to make the player conscious of the machine that workings underneath the representation and also kind of uh, giving the player uh, a, a, a digital literacy and a ludic literacy to, uh, yeah, to understand how the 3D environment works, what are the means of production under the, uh, the representation, and by doing so, maybe inviting or inciting players to become themselves creator, not just in the game by using uh, decals to repaint or redesign or re-estheticize the, the game environment, but by starting to critically understand the design structure and the, 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 the working of the game engine underneath the uh, simulation, that powers our simulation. And so this is kind of an opening and this is my deep aspiration that player will become uh, critically conscious of, of, uh, of game design as a practice, but also of game materiality uh, as something that is uh, powered by uh, technologies, by uh, cultural practices, and, and also by uh, ideological representation. And so this is a, a, a gateway to that kind of attitude. Okay, so I, I've talked enough. Let's now see everything in action. So let's say I want to put the angle, so the vector three movement of the, um, of the object. Uh, I'm experimenting, but let's say I want to go up uh, uh, five. Uh, remember that there's a multiplier here, so it's six multiplied by five. Uh, but you'll get this through experience instead of calculus, I guess. Uh, and in the front here, let's just keep it a bit, uh, a bit low just to make some tests. So uh, when you're done, you can just overwrite the thing. And when you grab the object, now when you shoot it, it just follows the direction that you've chosen it follows it 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 it, uh, it it flows with the force you've add and everything like this and so this is pretty cool and um one another important thing it's uh i'll show you this but let's keep in mind it's just some random tests i've made i'm really not sure i will keep it but i want to create a space for emergent gameplay inside Bug Hunter. I want to give players some multi some possibilities to combine various glitches on the on the same object and on multiple objects at the same time and the, and let him decide which glitches want to activate or deactivate in which order and everything like that. So I have coded this uh, oops, sorry. I have coded this multi-glitch panel here. So it's, uh, it's a bit complicated. So this is why I'm not sure I will be keeping it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really complicated. Um, I'm, I'm not sure every player will be comfortable uh, using this feature, but it's there. Uh, I'll, I'll maybe uh, give it a try. I'm not sure I'll have to test this with the actual player to get, to get their feedback. Uh, if you're interested in uh, giving me some feedback, don't, don't, don't hesitate. But uh, okay, how it works. So uh, let's say now I have a switcher apply on something on the respawner clone. So I have a switcher on this, I guess. 
Okay, let me try to... No, so there's a switcher on it, but it's done. It's not supposed to. Okay, so let me uh, give you an example of what you can do with that panel. So let's say I want to apply a demassifier and also I'm crazy and enforcer. So now there's two glitches on the same object. And when the panel is open, you can close it by pressing control or open it by pressing control. You can use the mouse button to scroll uh, between objects that has a glitch on it or on them. So now I have two objects that has glitches on, uh, on it. So let's take the table because I'm, I want to work on the table. And so now the object, as you can see, is demassified. Okay, it's because both glitches are, are on, as you can see, they are in the green uh, column. But let's say I want to just enforce the object and throw it in the space. In that actual scenario, I will not be allowed to do that because since the object has no gravity uh, and basically it's, it's an absence of gravity, but the mass is really high, like a thousand. So to be sure that the object doesn't move when the player jump on it. So this actual code uh, the actual way the code works, uh, I will not be able to enforce the object and throw it in the air. So what I can do with that panel is just turn off some glitches. And now it doesn't work, I don't know why. All right, welcome back uh, folks. Uh, for some reason, the, the game engine <laughs> has stopped working. Uh, I just try to reboot, as you see, I've tried to re reboot the system and it just freeze. So now we're good. We're back on track. I'm sorry for that short delay. So I, I was speaking about the multi glitch panel and when I tried to show you how it works, uh, it doesn't go quite well. And so after rebooting, everything seems to work fine. I don't know why, but, um, okay. So let's get back to our example as, uh, was. Uh, that, that, as I had configured everything, it was exactly like this. So I want to enforce the object, but as you can see, it is uh, demassified, so I cannot I cannot throw it in the air. So what the multi glitch panel would allow to do is just to toggle between various glitches. And so, as you can see, if I use the one, two, three, four key. I can toggle on off some glitches. So now there's nothing there. If I take it, it falls down. I cannot I also access the, the uh, enforcer interface. And so let's say, let's say I want to use the enforcer uh, and then when the object is uh, high enough, I want to just jam it there by uh, uh, demassifying it. So I can do that with the multi-glitch panel. So Let's go there, access the interface. Let's just boost a bit on the high so I can just show you a quick demonstration and quick click apply. And now when I will shoot it, it will jump in the air and then I could just activate the demassifier when I want it to stop there. So now, as you can see, the uh, enforcer is, has been removed from the glitch panel because it has been used on the, on the object. Uh, on the other side, you can see I have uh, my demassified, demassified object up there. And so let's imagine that uh, I had a, a switcher on it. I could then switch with that object uh, position uh, high in the air and use that falling trajectory to reach an higher platform, let's say. Uh, in fact, I can do it right now if it works. So now, as you can see, there is a switcher on it. So if I, if I toggle it off and use my switcher, you can see there's no glitch. Uh, there's no possibility to switch. But if I, uh, let's say I want to uh, just lower it down a bit, I can toggle on, off, toggle on, off, and just wait until it's at the right spot. Okay, so now let's say it's good for me. Now I can uh, activate the, the switcher, use my secondary mouse button and then switch place with that object. So 
So this is the kind of thing you can do. Uh, I'm not sh I'm not sure of all the possibilities of this. Uh, and this is the beauty of the thing, I guess. Um, it's about creating the possibility to create thing that even me, as the designer of the game, uh, didn't envision. And so I may keep it. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I can have some bonus level that re requires some more elaborate uh, ma multi-glitch management, or even uh, put some Easter eggs that need to be uh, a bit clever in the use of multi-glitch uh, on the same object. Voila. Okay, and there's a last one last thing I want to show you. It's the, uh, as I mentioned, the possibility to be transgressive. So let's say I have adopted the transgressive uh, approach and I want to go on the top of the building, let's say. To do that, it removes our massifier and let's say I want to enforce the object but now I will launch myself in the air instead of the object itself. And since I want to go over the roof there, I will not be able to do that because there's a collider on the, on the roof. Let's just exemplify this. So activate the player rigid body, use a, a multiplier of 10, uh, let's say four, five maybe and a bit on the, on the front axis, just to give a bit uh, of uh, forward movement, forward velocity. You can also invert. So if I invert, as you can see, I can invert the axis. So instead of going forward, I will go backward. Instead of going up, I will going down. All, the kind, all those kind of stuff that can be done with this uh, interface. So let's say I'm uh, happy with that configuration after many, many, many time of experimentation. I do this and jump and oh okay it wasn't high enough so i need to repeat the process with a better uh, better uh, configuration so let's go back open this and uh, maybe go 20 let's be let's be crazy let's do 20 over like this bang buff and i just hit the ceiling really hard so as you can imagine be crafty and just uncollide the, uh, the roof and force your object. Go back there in the interface. Everything is still in place. As you can see, just override it to be sure and boom. And now I'm on the top and I have put a quick uh, small Easter egg for you here. Image of one of the cat of the family called Lichi. Uh, Lichi is my uh, experimentation texture because I'm I'm now toying around with um, the shader graph, which is an awesome feature for uh, something who's not into mathematical coding and everything. Uh, yeah, shader graph is a really beautiful, beautiful tool. It allows to do really nice stuff here, and so uh, I'm just experimenting with an image of the cat of the family and let's say okay i'm transgressive everything blah 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 um let's explore what happens around here okay nothing much and let's say aha a secret place okay secret place let's explore and a bang wow oh there's a crack here that is already closed seems that finally uh, the imaginary designer have done their, their job, but I'm a transgressive uh, mofo. <laughs> and so let's just open this because we don't care. We like glitches. We don't want to get rid of bugs. We want more bugs. And so uh, I have just equipped the rock, which is the main ammunition of the game. And when you open the crack, you can see the beauty, the beauty of the glitch. <laughs> Uh, multiplying around of course as you can see it's not uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's not uh, it's not the actual final design quite the contrary it's just um, a, a mistake in the code where my line of code just slips in the update function and now at each frame the game engine just spawn 10 bugs in the uh, game space but um, 
you get the gist of it. Um, the point is just to open the cracks and you've seen the animation of the cracks opening up, new glitches come around. And, um, and, by, doing, I, and by taking this route, uh, players will be on the transgressive trajectory and uh, it will be possible to reach the next level and new puzzle, new environment will be presented to the player. So that's it. Um, thank you for your uh, attention. It's a really, uh, I'm really happy if you're still listening at this point. And um, yeah, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.